Thank you so much. You can be seated. I'm so happy to be here. Well, well, let me say that a different way. <laughs> I told Brother Nathan last night, I said, Brother Nathan, if I had have known that um, Sister Wendell was going to be here preaching after me, I would have said no. Well, actually, I did say no at the beginning. I said, what about if we just have a choir practice? That would make me feel so much better. <laughs> and I'd just say a few little words. So then last night I said, you tricked me. <laughs> Sister Wendell's going to be here preaching. And, and I, yeah, woo, that's how I feel. <laughs> Can't wait to hear her. In fact, I was telling her earlier um, that when I first um, it's been a long time. As you know, she's just a wonderful woman of God, and she's preached for a very long time. And uh, I know I'm not here to introduce her, but um, she she affected my life so much. I think she was probably the first lady that I heard that was so... Um, there's a lot of ladies who are incredibly powerful, but she's the first lady that I heard that was just amazingly powerful. And I remember sitting there, I won't ever forget, it's been years ago, and I remember sitting there just like in awe of what God was doing through her, because it is about God, amen. And I was just so amazed at what God was doing through her, and I just sat there and tears pouring down my face, and I said, Oh, God, I just, I want that. I, I, want, I want that anointing. I, I want that in my life, you know. And then I heard her story. And I was like, oh, do I really want that? <laughs> you know, but I'm really looking forward to hearing Sister Wendell, as you are. Um, I want to say thank you for, um, to Sister Mandy for those kind words. Sister Mandy is probably one of the classiest, most gracious, beautiful, talented. She's an amazing singer. She made me so happy the other night when she sang. I was like going, whew, I might have to take me a lap if she sings that verse one more time. <laughs> but, she, but what I love about her, besides all of those qualities, is that she is um, very humble, and she cares about people. And she's always just making sure that everybody's, you know, okay. At least she does that to me because I've kind of been a, a visitor, you know, for a couple of years now. She's always making me, trying to make me feel welcome, you know. And I, I really appreciate that so much today. And I do humbly honor and respect where I am right now because I know that anyone or all of you could be right here saying what I am saying or saying something much better than what I'm going to, or saying the thing I'm going to say much better. How about that? Because anytime you speak the word of the Lord, it's a good thing, right? Um, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer <laughs> right here. So um, I'm just, I'm just grateful to be here. I'm um, happy. I would like to give honor to my mother who is not here today. She wanted to be here. She was here last year, but she's not here. But I think there's some lay ministry wives from our church that's here in her place. And I just want to um, tell, say thank you to them for being here. And um, my mother was a godly praying woman. And besides Sister Wendell, I've always said I'd love to be like my mother and be able to pray like my mother. Because if we can pray, if we can pray, no matter who it's like, God will open up the windows of heaven and he will pour out blessings that we will never be able to comprehend or receive. Amen. It is all about our relationship and our prayer and our praise to the Lord. Amen. Well, so does anybody in here own a VW? Does anybody own a VW? Ah, you own a VW? Look at you. Is it convertible? Oh, well, that's okay because a VW is works. It's fine. I can't believe you own a VW. Look, stand up. I just want you to look at this wonderful, beautiful, white-haired lady who owns a VW. <laughs> Sister Mandy just got a Mini Cooper, which is almost like a VW in my book. She's, she said, I've always wanted one. They're so fun. Well, that's what I think about VWs. You know, I look at them, and I say, um, I say oh, those VWs look so fun. They, I just want to get in one of them and I want to take the top off and I just want to ride down the street and I just want to like be free and fun and easy and just not have a worry in the world. 
you know, and we were riding down the road the other day, my husband and I. He didn't know I was going to talk about this. I mean, it was just like right before I came here. And he goes, look at that VW. Wouldn't it be fun just to have a VW? I said, oh, God, thank you for that confirmation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but instead of VW standing for Volkswagen, today VW is going to stand for Valley Worship. Can you say Valley Worship? Okay, now, as a choir of one voice, I want you to lift your voice and say Valley Worship. All right, woohoo! Yeah, y'all are all good. We're gonna have us a choir today. All right, because in Second Chronicles twenty and twenty-one, King Jehoshaphat he had a choir. So if he can have a choir, we can have a choir, right? See what fun we're gonna have today. We're gonna defeat that enemy. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a great choir today. Say Valley Worship. Valley. Well, King Jehoshaphat had a very unusual way of organizing an army. So in, in this verse, it says, The king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord, praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Sounds like this. I can't hear you. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. Okay, this is what I want you to sing. His love endures forever. Sing that. His love endures forever. Okay, so I'm going to sing. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. Yeah. For he is good. He's above all things. Sing praise, 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 now here we go, forever God is faithful, strong, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever God is with us, forever, now aren't you glad about that? Okay. All right, now all of you ladies that kind of sing in the middle, that's your part. So let's try it again. One, two, three. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us. Forever? Forever. Now if you sing high, this is what you sing. Here we go. Forever God is faithful. what you're going to sing. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us. Forever. Now everybody sing. Here we go. Lift it up. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Do you believe that? Forever God is From the rising to the setting sun, his love endures forever. This is the one I like. And by God's grace, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. I'm going to give him all the praise. Sing praise. Yes. Do it again. Sing praise. Sing praise. Y'all are an amazing choir. Come on, sing praise. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Yes, God, you are. You are, Lord. You are worthy. Let's love him one more time, God. You are worthy. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, Jehoshaphat's battle plan was to put that choir. Now, if he'd had y'all's choir, that, that, probably, that war probably wouldn't even begin to have started. If we, he had us. Because y'all are amazing, so amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when we have choir practice and they sound really good, you know, there's this little song, Ty Trivet. Anybody heard of Ty Trivet? There's a song that he goes, you're amazing, so amazing, woo! You know, because he likes to do all the woo things. How many, know, how many heard how many of you? Yeah, some of us heard him. Okay, so he, he's real, his music is great, you know, but he's talking about God, of course. But I'll talk about the choir, and I'll say, you're amazing, so amazing, and they'll go, woo! So you're amazing, so amazing. Woo! Okay, yes. <laughs> All right, so his battle plan then was to put the choir in front of the infantry. So get this. On this side up here is three armies. They're the enemy armies, and they're the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the Edomites. And they're all gathered to do battle against Israel. And the place where they're going to do battle is down here in this valley. And then there's the Israelites over here, and they're probably scared slap silly, as we would say in Georgia, you know, scared slap silly, until Jehoshaphat says, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take those of you who sing, which would be all of you, because you're amazing, so amazing, <laughs> and put you in front of the army. And you're going to march into battle down into the valley, straight toward your enemy in the valley, doing valley worship. Valley worship. Yeah, there you go. Giving praise. Amen. All right. There's a little side note here about this little idea about the Israelites. They started thanking God in advance for the victory in the valley. Amen? Praise and thanksgiving are verbalized faith. If you just thank God after the fact, then that's called gratitude. And the Lord wants us to have faith. Amen? How many times have we walked straight toward our enemy in the valley worshiping? I mean, do we say, oh, praise the Lord, I get to go to the church today and counsel that sister who just cannot stand me. How many times do we do that? Or have we rejoiced when we went to the store and we looked in our checkbooks or we went to swipe our card and there was no money to pay for the groceries? Oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, for that. <laughs> I haven't done that. I'm sorry to say I'm trying to do better. <laughs> Or, or maybe you praise the Lord because sometimes it just seems like you just can't make your husband happy or your children happy. Or, or, or maybe we're just yelling out praises to God because we haven't quite found our place in ministry yet, either our husbands or ourselves. And it just feels so wonderful feeling worthless, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, amen. <laughs> the situations that we will stretch our faith the most will be those times when life seems to be falling apart. Amen. And God is nowhere to be found. And we've already heard this week, but this, is hap this happens to Job. Has ha this happened to Job. And we all know this story, that on a single day, he lost everything, his family, his business, his health, and everything he owned. But I think one of the most discouraging things for Job, if I would ask him this, would be that for 37 chapters of the Bible, ever how long that was, God said nothing to him. So, so, so how do we praise God when we don't understand what's happening in our life and God is silent? Do we keep our eyes on Jesus? How do we do that when our eyes are so full of tears? And, and, and how do we do that? But we do just like Job did. He said, fell to the ground in worship. Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I will depart. I came here with nothing. I'm going to go out with nothing. The Lord is given and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Amen. Amen. Let's look at the effect that um, the praises of Israel had in verses 22 and 23 in 2 Chronicles 20. It says, when they began to sing, 
the Lord threw the invading armies into a panic. So what happens is the Ammonites and the Moabites attacked the Edomite army and completely destroyed it. And then they turned on each other in savage fighting. One translation said, God so confused the enemy that they turned on each other and destroyed themselves while the Israelites, this is my youngest son's translation, sat back, crossed their arms, propped their legs up, ate popcorn, and watched the drama. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So what happens when we begin to sing in our valley worship, the Lord throws your enemies into a panic. Your help will not destroy you. The financial mess you're in will not destroy you. The relationship you have a problem with will not beat you down. The marital strife will turn into peace, at least for you as you sing in your valley. The court battle that you might be fearful of will not come to be as we give the Lord praise. You will not lose your church and all your saints. You will not lose your health or your family or your mind. And if we do suffer loss, he will turn it around for our good. That's his promise when we pray. Praise him. Hallelujah. And I have a feeling that all of us in here, are, a lot of us in here today are fixers because God has, uh, God has uh, given that to us as ministry folks. Amen. We, we like to fix things a lot of times. We, we want to fix the ladies in our church or we want to fix the food or, or we want to fix the choir or we want to fix our husbands. <laughs> oh, yes. Hallelujah. I might need to take a lap on that one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> And so when we praise him, instead of trying to fix it all ourselves, you know, we will be able to stand still and see his salvation because his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that God keeps us from trouble by surrounding us with songs of deliverance. Psalms 32, 7 says, you are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Now, do you think that God, this means that God's going to stand up there and sing over us? Or maybe he's going to have an angelic choir to come up here and just sing right over us and surround us. Or do the praise songs of other people uh, give us deliverance? Or Maybe God uses the songs of praise that we sing to him as a holy covering. Amen? Amen. That separates us from anyone or anything that tries to separate us from him. Only God knows the answers to those questions, but we can know that wonderful and powerful things happen to us when we sing it to him in our valleys. Among them are breakthrough, deliverance, and transformation. Hallelujah. I have to just say this, though, because I get convicted sometimes when I think about this subject in my own mind. You know, I I think I got to remember that I am not worshiping God to obtain his blessings. That's not really worshiping God, right? That's worshiping the blessings. And sometimes we can think, we we, we think in our minds that we can, well, we don't think this really, but it's a manipulation thing. You know, if I praise him, then I'm going to manipulate him to work in my life. God can't be manipulated anyway because he knows our hearts and he knows our minds and he knows our thoughts. Amen. Amen. But whenever we fully acknowledge who God is and worship him for who he is, our praise unleashes the blessings that are with him and in him and because of him. And praise brings us into the presence of God and invites his presence to dwell with us in a deeper way. And in his presence, it's impossible not to be changed, delivered, and made whole. Amen. 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 When we make our, our uh, first reaction to what happens in our life, a reaffirming praise to God for who he is, we invite his presence to inhabit the situation. And his power comes and it changes things. Sometimes we just have to say, I will praise you, Lord. I will do it. I will myself to praise the Lord. Sometimes we don't feel like praising the Lord. Sometimes the situations are so hard and the pain is so unbearable that we just don't feel like praising the Lord. Amen. Sometimes we just feel like going over here and sitting in this corner and either pouting 
and saying, God, I work for you. I do this for you. I do the choir. I teach Sunday school. I fix food. I counsel. I, I, I'm a wife to my husband. I'm a mother to my kids. We keep reminding of the, the Lord of all the works that we do, right? And it's not about our works. It's about him and his grace and his blessing, right? So I do that. I'm just saying I do that. I'm not saying y'all do that. See, that's why I said y'all should be up here teaching this lesson, <laughs> not me. <laughs> But sometimes I'll do that. You know, I kind of start feeling sorry for myself. Does anybody else do that? Yeah, we do that. But about five years ago, I came across this little book that really changed my life. I mean, I, I it's, it was pretty amazing. And the way I came across it was even kind of more amazing. I guess um, I, well, I'm fixing to tell you about me. <laughs> I'm kind of pack radish. I don't like to throw anything away because I might need to wear that hat with another dress that I have, you know, or I might need those shoes with the dress that I'm going to buy in a couple months. <laughs> Not really, but kind of. <laughs> Just kidding, kind of. <clears throat> but I was going through uh, a, a, a cl in my closet. I was cleaning out my closet, and um, I, I came upon a stack of cards, <laughs> These cards had been in my closet for seven years because my child was seven years old, and it was a sh the shower, is his baby shower cards that were in this closet. <laughs> so that's how I know that those cards had been sitting in my closet for seven years. But in the middle of this, these cards were, uh, was a book called From Prison to Praise. I have no clue how it got there. I had never seen the book before. I'm a firm believer in angels. I have lots of angel stories I'd love to tell you about because I just love angel stories and how angels take care of us. And, you know, the Bible says they will. You know, if we dash our foot against the stone, they're right there. And so, you know, maybe my angel put it there. I don't know. But somehow this book was there. Short little book. The book is called From Prison to Praise. And basically it's by Merlin Carruthers. You can get it on Amazon for about two bucks. I mean, it's just really, it's an easy read, short read. And I remember I was going through a pretty tough time in, in our lives. We were pastoring a church, uh, a, a um, daughter work of my father's. And um, it, was, it was tough, you know. Y'all know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I see you nodding your heads. So I was sitting there, and I went through this book. And as I was reading this book, I was squalling and crying. And I said, Lord, you've given me this book. I just want to thank you for this book. And, and basically it says, this man was in prison. The Lord changed his life. He got in, um, he, he received the, the gift, the spirit. He received the Holy Ghost. Um, and the Lord led him into, um, like, the gifts of the spirit. And so he became uh, a chaplain in the army. And what would happen is when the people would come to counsel with him, he would tell them, he would show them in the Bible. He would say, do you believe the Bible? And yes, they believe the Bible. And he would say, okay, if you believe the Bible, then do you believe that all things work together for good? And they said, yes, we believe all things work together for good. Well, if you believe the Bible and you believe that all things work together for good, then you need to praise the Lord for the situation that you are in. Now, I'd never done that. I, I mean, just honestly, I've been raised in church. My mother is a prayer warrior. We, we, we'd love to have church. When we go to church, we'd praise the Lord and dance and shout. And I love that. And I'd weep and I'd cry. And I'd, I'd love, I, I love to do that. You know, but praising the Lord for the pain and for the challenges and for the loss and for the grief, I, I had never done that. And so I sat there on the floor that day sobbing, and I said, Lord, I want to do this. I, I, I want to do this. And so as I started trying to live this out, I, I remember thinking the next day we went to church, um, the Lord didn't give that just for me. 
obviously the Lord doesn't take us through things and show us things just for ourselves, right? He does it for us to share with other folks. And so the next day I went to church, and we, as I said, we were pastoring a daughter work, small church, and we had, um, I had two people that were helping me, a couple that was fixing to get engaged, or fixing to get married, they were engaged, plus my son. And, um, and when that day, right before church, the way they would do it, they would go to their church on Sunday morning, and they would come help us in the afternoon. So right before our church service, they had been to their church. Uh, the the guy called my husband, and he said, um, "I just no 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 I'm sorry." The girl called my husband, and she said, "Brother Tim," she said, "He broke up with me after church today." In the message, he broke up with me, and she was squalid and bawling. And she didn't think she was going to be able to come to church. And he said, go ahead and come, and I want you to praise the Lord. I just want you to praise the Lord. You know, just come and worship. You don't have to sing on the platform. Just come. Well, I should be honest with you. I got so mad because those are my only two music help. And now it kind of messed it all up. I forgot to give the Lord the music that day. You know how sometimes we do. We forget to give it to the Lord. It's the Lord's anyway, right? So anyway, she came. And she she worshiped the Lord. I was so proud of her and thankful for what she did. And she just loved the Lord and worshiped and cried. And in the middle of that service, the Lord spoke to me and he said, that book yesterday was not just for you. You need to share that, that little concept with her. So I, gave, I told her the little story and I kind of told her all about the, the, I just told her what I told you about the book and about it. And I said, this is what I think you need to do. I think you need to praise the Lord for this situation. Don't thank the Lord that he's going to give you somebody better because I've said that to people before. Oh, don't worry about it, sister. The Lord's going to give you somebody better. Oh, don't worry about it. You just pray and it'll all work out and he'll make you happy. I didn't say that. I said, you ask the, you just thank the Lord because he let this happen. Don't thank him for anything else. Not that you're going to get together. Not that you're going to get a better husband. Nothing. You just thank the Lord for this. Okay, sister, go ahead. I'll do this. I'll, I will. And she was squalling and bawling. Her heart was broken. They were getting married in two months. And so I'd text her in the week. You know, I'd say, how are you doing? She said, I'm still praising the Lord. I'm just praising the Lord for it. Well, they got married, and they got married on their wedding date. But uh, two, about a couple of years later, we, we weren't pastoring that church anymore, and we were doing something else in ministry, and we were out of town. And my son and I had gotten in-ear monitors, and they were working in an audio-type situation that, that does in-ear monitors. And so we came back, and she was expecting a baby. And, um, and, and that day, as you would know, the Lord orchestrates everything so awesomely, doesn't he? He's amazing, so amazing. Yes, he is. <laughs> Woo! Um, so when I came back, we came to their office that day, and uh, she was going to the doctor because her baby had, had has some serious issues wrong with him, and she was really worried about it. And I said, you know what? Do you remember when we praised the Lord for the time that you guys broke up? Do you remember that? I do remember that, she said. I said, that's what you need to do for this baby. You just praise the Lord for all this, all, everything that's going on with this baby. You just praise the Lord for it. And she did. And the baby was fine. Amen. Praise God. I remember one time right after this, I was in, uh, uh, we were still, at this point, we were still pastor in our church. And, and I was in the bedroom and I was praying. And my husband came in and he said, you know what, Joy? He said, we have absolutely no more money. <laughs> yeah, y'all know. Some of you, I hear that. Yeah. We have no more money. Like, we might lose our house. Like, we don't have money to feed our boys or my mother-in-law lives with us. We, we don't have money. We absolutely have no more money. And I was kind of groveling anyway, trying to live my life in praise, but you know, it's a daily death, right? Paul says we die daily. So we can teach this and we can believe this and we can speak it into other people's lives, but we really have to do it daily. And so, so I was, I, I remember I was in my bedroom and I, I said, okay. So I started dancing before the Lord and I said, Lord, I thank you that you're going to let us lose our house. Maybe. And I, maybe. I thank you. I was squalling. I was crying. I thank you that we don't have any more money to buy groceries. I, I thank you that 
that this could be really, really bad. I thank you for that. I was just crying, and, and truly I was in my heart and in my spirit. I wanted to be there. I want to be there so bad because I feel like when we do this concept, it really takes us into the presence of the Lord, and it really shows him how much we love him and how much we depend on him and how much we trust him, and that's all he wants from us, really. He wants us to love him, to trust him, and depend on him. So as I was, I was worshiping, worshiping him and praising him for this, what I thought was a trauma in our lives, you know, I got peace about it. And I said, okay, Lord, it's going to be all right. Well, in the matter of one week, the Lord blessed us with $10,000. It was crazy, crazy. And I have stories that I could continue to tell but I am being continually amazed that confusion and oppression and fear and anxiety cannot exist in the heart of a worshiping child of God. We are to praise him for all things because all things work together for our good, even our mistakes and our failures. Sometimes I'll say things, oh my goodness, y'all. Oh, my goodness. I'll say things that I think, why in the world did I say that? And I can't get through it because I'm kind of OCD about stuff, you know. And I can't get through it, and I can't work through it, and I can't work through the mistakes that I've made, and I can't work through the things that I've said or the people that I may have hurt, you know. And once once I say, Lord, forgive me, okay, because... It's all right to ask forgiveness, right, when we say things or do things that aren't quite right that the Lord wouldn't want us to do. Then I'll just say, okay, Lord, I'm just going to thank you. I thank you for that. I remember one thing I said one time in a group of people that I was so, I couldn't believe I said it. It was, came out of my mouth. It was horrible. It was very insulting to someone who was a dear friend. And I just, I couldn't get through it weeks and weeks and weeks. I couldn't get through it. And I said, and I apologized to the Lord. I asked for forgiveness. And I didn't say anything to her because it was terrible. I didn't want her to know I said it. Anybody ever done that? Okay, I'm the only one. But I'm, I'm not kidding you. When I said, Lord, I just thank you. I don't know why I said that, but I thank you that I said that. The peace that came into my heart from doing that. Isn't that crazy? But it's, it's the principle of praising the Lord for everything, for everything, and not too long after that I had read this little book, well, 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 it's a while, about two, three years. It was just a couple years ago, actually, that I found this verse in the Bible, Ephesians 5 and 20. It says, praise the Lord for everything. Because we quote that scripture, in everything, give thanks for this, you know, we in everything, through everything. And when I found this scripture, I said, oh, Lord, for everything, I'm going to give thanks because you are working everything out for my good. Amen? Well, about a year ago, I got into this other little, I got into my little uh, thing again where I was sitting in the middle of my bed and I had my devotion books around and I was just, I was doing my thing for the Lord daily. I try to do that. And, and so I was just kind of sitting there and was going through one of those seasons again, like we all get through that we've talked about already this morning. And I was, I was reading and I was praying and I said, Lord, I, I'm, I've really tried to live this principle of praising you. I want to praise you with my life. I, I'm living it. I'm trying to live it, but I just don't understand this. It just seems like such a battle for me, this pain and this, this um, stress and the challenges of life and just all that we go through. And I remember I was looking above this little wardrobe that was that's in my room, and I was just looking up there, and I was just kind of meditating and crying before the Lord and trying to praise him and worship him. And you know what he said to me? He said, not in an audible voice, but this thought dropped in my mind, and he said, you're not your own. And I said, I know. I know everything that I have, you know, my house is not mine, my husband's not mine, my kids are not mine, you know, anything that you blessed me with is not mine, I know that. But he was like, "Mm -mm. your pain is not your own, your challenges are not your own, because you are not your own, you are put here for me, 
Your life is put here to bring me glory. So if I let you go through pain and if I let you go through suffering, then you just thank me for it because you're here for me, not for you. What a rest and a peace that was. I was at a church in uh, Alabama a couple months ago. My little friend Amber was there. I told her this morning, I said, don't come. You're going to hear about the same thing because <laughs> I only have one thing. to. I, you know, I don't do this. I do choirs, Sister Mandy. <laughs> Tell your husband. No. Um, so, so, but the, but this is such a passionate subject for me. I just, and it's changed my life and so many lives of my friends that I just, I just want everybody to know about it because it's just such a refreshing place to be, you know. So anyway, I was telling this little, uh, these, these little principles uh, last couple months ago and about praising the Lord for everything. And, and we're not really our own and everything that we go through is, is because the Lord allows it. And, and we just thank him for it because he knows what's best for us. And there was a lady that came up afterwards and she wanted me to meet her daughters. And, um, and so she, um, she was, they, they were so sweet and cute, and it, we were having a good time just talking and being fun, you know. And, and she was trying to discreetly tell me that one of the, the oldest daughter was not really where she needed to be with the Lord. And, and, um, and she was being kind about it, you know, and the little girl, she was the oldest one. And she was standing there, you know, being who she was at that, in that season of her life, I like to say. And, and I just felt to say, you know what? We're going to praise the Lord for this because she's not yours and you're not yours. She's God's and you're God's. And we're just going to thank her, thank the Lord for this because he's going to work this for her good and your good. And so I got a text from the pastor's wife of the church that I was in. They, they didn't belong to that church. They just came for that night. And um, this little girl, um, the, the mother, had wanted the, the pastor's wife to text me to tell me that um, because she had tried to practice these little principles um, about a couple weeks after that happened, her daughter was in a wreck, bad wreck. And she texted me all, she shouldn't have even been alive. But she came through and she is turning her life around for the Lord because her mom had the courage to give her to the Lord and not take her as her own and praise her for where she was at that moment. Amen. I want you to thank the Lord for that. Amen. And as I, as I close, I'd like, to, I'd like for you to kind of help me uh, read this scripture. We're not taking away and adding to, but, I, but I'd like for you to help me. Lamentations 3 says, I will never forget this awful time, say in my valley. As a choir of one voice, lift your voice and say, in my valley. You know, the Bible says, lift your voice, cry unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I will never forget this awful time. As I grieve over my loss, my pain, my fear, my rejection, yet I still dare to hope praise and worship when I remember this, that his love endures forever. Amen. The faithful love of the Lord never end. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance, my peace, my hope, my joy. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who depend on him in their. Amen. To those who search for him worshiping. So it is good to wait quietly in spirit, resting for salvation from the Lord comes I'd like for you to just to close your eyes right now, and I want to just sing this little song. And I, I've seen some of us today, and I know that some of us are in our own spot, in our own little valley. So whatever, for, so whatever it is and wherever you are, I want this little song just to minister to your spirit. He loves to hear 
praises from his people. He loves to hear thanks from a mountaintop. But I believe it draws a tear down his face. When he hears, hallelujahs from the valley, hallelujahs from the saint, who in pain with every heartbeat still lifts his hands to say, I will bless the Lord at all times. No matter come what may, hallelujah from the valley, Thank you, Jesus. hallelujah for the pain, he loves to see all his children prosper. He loves to shower them with blessings from above. But when the rain is pouring down, he's touched by this sound. Yes, he is. I know he is. Hallelujah for the valley. Hallelujah for the saint who with pain in every heartbeat still lifts her hands to say, I will bless you, Lord, at all times, no matter come what may. Hallelujah from the valley, oh, Lord. Hallelujah for the pain. Yes, Lord. Sing hallelujah for the rain. Sing hallelujah for the pain. Lord, Belongs to you, Lord, I love you. Hallelujah for this valley. Hallelujah for this rain. In pain with every heartbeat, I'll still lift my hands and say, why don't you do that? I will bless you, Lord, at all times for whatever comes my way. Hallelujah for the valley, yes. Hallelujah for the pain. I will bless you, Lord, at all times, yes. Oh, yes. Say, I will bless you, Lord, at all times. For whatever comes my way, hallelujah for the valley, hallelujah for the valley, Woo! hallelujah for the pain, hallelujah for the valley, hallelujah for the valley, hallelujah for the sickness, hallelujah for my circumstances. So oh, I will bless the Lord. Yes, I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord at all times. At all times. Oh, I will bless the Lord. I bless you, Lord. I praise 
you, Lord. I magnify you, Lord, at all times. Oh, at all times. I will bless you, Lord. Your praise will always be forever in your name. 